This video takes a look at the one dimensional truss element in finite elements analysis. Let's go ahead and take a look. So first we want to remember the spring element. The spring element is going to be very similar to the truss element. Here we have our stiffness K. We have our forces and our displacements at each node. Remember that we have this elemental stiffness matrix for the spring element that relates our displacements with our forces at each node. And the main thing that we want to take a look at is the stiffness K. And what is it for a truss element? A truss element is very similar. All we have to do is figure out what K is for our truss element. So to do that, let's take a look at a bar undergoing axial loading. There's our bar. There's the axial stress that it is undergoing. Let's assume that it has an original length L. And let's assume that after that stress is applied, it experiences some deformation, delta L, that is equal to the strain, the axial strain of that bar multiplied by its original length. Now, given that, we have Hooke's law relationship in one dimension, which is that the stress is equal to the strain multiplied by the elastic modulus. So that elastic modulus represents the linear relationship between stress and strain. Okay, so that's Hooke's law. Looking at Hooke's law, we can redraw our axial truss, or pardon me, our truss bar undergoing axial loading, axial stress with the length undergoing a little bit of deformation. And there's our axial strain, bringing in Hooke's law again in one dimension, knowing that our stress is just going to be equal to the force, the total force through that bar divided by the cross sectional area of that bar knowing that our axial strain is just going to be equal to our change in length divided by our original length. And so if we make those substitutions, we can rearrange our Hooke's Law equation in the following form. And you'll notice that this is the same type of form that we have for the spring equation, which relates the force going through a spring and the resulting displacement, where this would be our stiffness. So it turns out that that's our stiffness. So now we have the following equation for the 1D truss element stiffness matrix. There's our truss element. There's our forces. There's U1, U2. All right, we're going to go ahead and assume that we know what the length is for that truss element. We know what the elastic modulus is, and we also know what the cross sectional area is. And if we know all those things, then we can go ahead and put together our truss element stiffness matrix in one dimension. There's our displacement, displacements, pardon me, there's our force vector, and this is our stiffness matrix, where instead of having K, we have E, our elastic modulus, multiplied by our cross-sectional area A, divided by the length L. And we'll go ahead and frame it, because that's the final equation we have for this video before we get on to our reflective questions. So the first question that we have is, what is the equivalent axial stiffness for a truss element? The next one is, why might one say everything is a spring? And finally, if a truss element experiences a known tensile force, what change in the following will cause the nodes to move further apart. So we have our elastic modulus, our cross-sectional area, and our length. In other words, do they need to increase or decrease in order for the nodes to move further apart? And that concludes our presentation on the one-dimensional truss element in finite element analysis. Thank you.